Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. I'm coming at you live right here, Gotham Central Comics and Collectibles, right here in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Anyway, go make sure you check out all of these uh, ways to look at the store and whatnot because they're gonna kind of matter. I'm gonna explain that by the end of the, the uh, episode today. All sorts of good stuff coming up for you. All right, let's get started with the most obvious one. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hell Arisen issue number three. This is going to be considered the first full appearance of Punchline. Listen, my peeps, uh, I literally walked into the store and had this handed to me because they're trying to fulfill a whole bunch of orders for people. So, look, I'm saying, I'm saying, if you're local especially, call Carlos up, talk to him. If you're not local, you want to make sure you get one of these contact Carlos also because he can get you one. He can get you a bunch. Uh, worst case, go to your local comic book store. The idea is you have to make sure you're ordering these things in advance to make sure you're actually gonna get one in your pull list. Uh, what's most important is the idea that if not enough are ordered, that last minute pull list thing simply isn't going to fly, all right? Last week we did the um, one per for everybody with the issue number 89 for the first cameo appearance of Punchline, which actually had two appearances in it. People going crazy over it. People going crazy over it. We've got a bunch more uh, first appearances. Uh, excuse me, first um, uh, releases. So, uh, yeah, all that good stuff. First edition, uh, first printing. Anyway, uh, and now it's just a, a free-for-all. But look, for things like this, also consider if you're not going to do the research for yourself for new appearances of fairly important characters, because this was not widely advertised, consider looking at some of your local speculation channels or just follow Comic Book University because I talk about this stuff all the time. Comic Book University followers knew about this long in advance and I'm sure already have their issues in stock. <laughs> so uh, let's get talk about some of the latest ones. Let's start off with the um, uh, Dawn of X books about giant size X-Men featuring uh, Jean Grey and Emma Frost. Uh, I'm excited to read this. I'm just saying. These are two of the, the most famous ex-ladies ever. And a uh, little debate that we had last night on uh, Discord. You guys make sure you follow my Discord. You got to find the Discord. Maybe I'll post it in, uh, in the links here. I don't know. You never know. But we'll see. Anyway, I was talking live with, uh, I think, six other guys about, uh, six other people. There, there was, there's a lady in there also. Uh, talking about the uh, most famous redhead in Marvel. Who do you think it is? Anyway, issue number eight of New Mutants. How you doing? We've got X-Force, issue number eight. Uh, we have got issue number seven of X-Men. Hey. And uh, this little ditty, I don't think anybody's reading this, but uh, X-Men and Fantastic Four, issue number two of four. Yeah, hottest book ever. This is the first book I'm reading when I go home. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Um... X4, or excuse me, Force Works, issue number one, 2020. This is only one in three. There's only going to be three issues of this. Um, Force Works, if you're not uh, familiar, was actually, there was uh, Avengers West Coast, then there was West Coast Avengers. I think all that happened even after the, uh, the four-issue limited series for Hawkeye. Anyway, and then eventually became Force Works, and then it just died a death, and it was gone. But anyway... Matt Rosenberg is bringing back Force Works. Uh, the first three, there's going to be three issues for this, and we'll see what happens afterwards. Okay, here's some of the greatest art ever. Issue number 1020, uh, Bendis and John Romita Jr. on Action Comics. Oh, yeah, some of the greatest art ever. Some of you guys know why that is funny. Okay, so <laughs> issue number 40 of The Amazing Spider-Man. Guys, I've been busy as heck, so I didn't even review issue number 39. I actually didn't read it yet. But I'll, I'll read it. I'll, I'll talk about it. If I do get the chance to do a review for this, I'll make sure I do issue number 39 also because... Mm. <laughs> Let's talk about number one for Amthest. Okay, this is not a first appearance. Though there may be some first appearances in here. I don't know. It's not a comic book I'm interested in reading. But definitely consider looking into it. Maybe there's something special here. Either way, it's an issue number one. So um, there has been an Amthest comic before, so it's not even the first... Uh, the first volume of Amthes, so whatever it is, what it is. Issue number two of Ant-Man, I remember I really liked the first issue. I may get it, get around to reading that, we'll see, but I am busy as heck this week. Uh, this is crunch week for me. Issue number 31 for Avengers. We have got Avengers of the Wasteland by Brisson, issue number two of five. We have got the next issue of uh, Basket Full of Heads, issue number five. That's out from Joe Hill, Hill House, Black Label. Sup? We got the issue number 44 of Batgirl is out. We have got Batman Beyond, issue number 41. 
Here's a good one. Uh, issue number, is this seven? Yep, issue number seven of Black Label's Batman Curse of the White Knight. We're going to get a big wrap-up in this one, apparently, and I can't wait to see what that is. Uh, probably falling off of this one, even though I love me some Cullen Bunn and Jesus, Mar uh, Jesus uh, Haravas. Anyway, issue number three of Dark Ark After the Flood. This is... This was a really good comic book. I'll try and pick it up and trade. There are too many comic books coming out right now, peeps. Issue number 1020 of Batman's Detective Comics. What's up? We have got Falcon and the Winter Soldier, issue number one. I was specifically requested on Discord to read this, so I'm kind of honor bound now, so I gotta read it and review it. It's not that I wasn't going to, but yeah. Anyway, issue number one of Fantastic Four, Grim Noir. There's going to be a whole bunch of the noir books coming out, and I'm actually interested in reading this. A whole bunch of good things you could do with Ben Grimm, man. Uh, issue number four of Young Animals' um, uh, Far Sector. This is a really good book. I think I read issue three. I don't think I read issue three. I can't remember if I read issue three, but um, yeah, there's that. And uh, issue four is out. Uh, I gotta see if other people are reviewing it. If they are, I'll let it slide. I'll just let other people review it. If they're not, fine, fine. I'll, I'll try to get to it, because it is a really good book. It's an amazing book. Uh, issue number five of Ghost Rider. Brisson again, killing it. Uh, there was a manufactured conspiracy on um, what is called Comic Book Resources, one of those corporate sites uh, that, that review comic books and give you comic book news. Anyway, uh, they're like, oh, they just made Mephisto the official devil of the Marvel Universe implicitly. Sorry, that's news? <laughs> so anyway, that was with uh, Ghost Rider's, um, uh, the one shot they just did with Lilith recently. Mother of, mother of uh, demons, I think it was called. Anyway, yeah, cute. <laughs> Whatever, man. They've done that before. I don't see what the problem is. Anyway, we got Jessica Jones' Blind Spot, issue number four. Uh, again, I've already reviewed these last year because they were initially released only as comiXology books. But I praised the book to no end because they were freaking amazing. So consider that. <laughs> consider that. And definitely consider checking this out. If you didn't uh, check that out, in worst case scenario, go back and check out my reviews for the Jessica Jones books because, man... This was great. This is Kelly Thompson, and she's absolutely killing. It doesn't even say it on here, but I remember. They're amazing, so definitely check those out. Uh, Justice League Dark, issue number 20 is out. I might have to drop this one just because, again, too many comic books. Uh, I just found myself staring at Lady Death, this cover, for way too long to not show it to you guys. Uh, I'm a human being. Anyway, uh, oh, here, here we go again. Bendis and Maleev with... Leviathan Dawn, Leviathan Dawn, issue number one, check and mate. Yeah, oh, this is going to be one of the, I can't, I can't. I'm not a good actor, and I acknowledge that. We have to know our weaknesses, we have to know our strengths. That's one of my weaknesses. Uh, humor, <laughs> uh, issue number 48 of Power Rangers, Necessary Evil. I'm just saying, I would love to jump on this one of these days, but we'll see. I'm pretty sure Ernie, uh, Blurred Without Fear, is reviewing these, if not, what kind of a super-duper Power Rangers fan is he anyway? Anyway, I'm pretty sure he's talking about these comic books because psh, issue number four of four of Ogres, bang. So finishing that out, uh, local guy, Sean Daly, and also um, uh, Bob Sally on here. Uh, what do you call it? Guy I've done an interview with three years ago, four years ago, <laughs> three years ago, something like that. Um, but totally, totally excellent guy and one of the... One of the uh, forefathers, one of, one of the godfathers, I should say, of independent comic book reviewers. Uh, not reviewers, um, creators. Anyway, uh, Punisher Soviet, issue number four. Not going to be reviewing it, but it exists. And there are some people who are like, no, it got better. I'm glad it did for you. Anyway, how about, uh, this is the only thing I saw this week from um, Valiant Comics. That's Quantum and Woody, issue number two. I seriously have to apologize for not doing a whole lot with Valiant comic books for the past two weeks. Like I said, I've been super busy, and unfortunately, one of my favorites has had to suffer for it. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make it up. I'm gonna read all those. I'm gonna put all those together in reviews. Uh, issue number two of Ravencroft Institute for the Criminally Insane. A lot of people going crazy over this one. We'll see. We'll see. 
We've got, uh, I'm only showing this one. This is issue number 27 of Matt Fraction and Chip Sardosky's Sex Criminals. The only reason why I'm even bringing this up is because Chip had a great point recently. He's like, hey, if you're sick of reading comic books that I write, check out one that I illustrate. So that was, that tweet made it worthy to point out that this issue is out now. Um, Scream, Curse of Carnage, issue number four is out. We have got Keen Spot doing Sister's Power, issue number two. I didn't even notice issue one. I don't remember issue number one being put out, but hey, this is out, so consider trying to find the other one. I like Keen Spot. They're, they're good people. Uh, issue number 11, Shazam, bang. This is out. I can't talk about delays anymore, man. Maybe I'm the only one making fun of it anymore. Uh, the Silver Cerebus, issue number one. <laughs> Speaks for itself, man. That's awesome. Uh, Peter Porker, Spectacular Spider-Ham, issue number three. We have got Star, issue number two. I like this. I'm looking forward to reading this one. Uh, probably going to have to drop this one. We'll see, even though I really do love the comic book. Uh, I'm going to have to just, you know, read them later. But Suicide Squad, uh, Tim Taylor, fantastic stuff, especially seeing these two go at it with each other. God, that is just such a great rivalry right there. Uh, and all made in issue number uh, one. Uh, issue number 752 of Wonder Woman. Call her Valda. Is that a new character? I don't know. Somebody goes and cracks a joke. Hey, I think you should uh, make yourself more familiar with Wonder Woman. What, because I didn't read the new 52? Seriously, like, that's it. I didn't read the new 52. I'm pretty sure I've read pretty much everything else by Wonder Woman, but you better catch yourself up, by the way, after the new 52. Um, Mirka and Dolfo, uh, doing Unsacred, Unsacred, this is issue number four, it's Mirka and Dolfo, whatever she's gonna do is read-worthy. Okay, if you're familiar with, um, Amthest, cool, if not, familiarize yourself because Dollar Comics, one dollar to get the first issue of the original volume of Amthest. We've got The Flash, um, boom, one dollar comic. We have got a uh, facsimile cover for The Flash. Look at that one. Boom. First appearance of ba Barry Allen showing up with Jay Garrett. That's a very famous cover, my peeps. You should check that out. We've got True Believers, uh, issue number one. Uh, well, whatever, whatever issue. It's, just, it's a True Believers $1 comic book from Marvel featuring Iron Man. I don't even remember what happened in here, but it has something to do with Iron Man 2020. So, boom, there you go. I'm positive I read it. I've read a lot of Iron Man. I just don't remember what that particular one is. And the final comic to show you is facsimile cover for Wolverine Volume 2, Issue 1. So two weeks ago, Volume 1, Issue 1 facsimile, and here's Volume 2, Issue 1. And I can't say which one was better because they were both absolutely amazing and very welcome on the comic book scene. Enough delays. You guys want to get to the sweep, right? I know. I'm not really loved here. You just love me for the sweep.
And let's take a look at some of the figures over here. Look at this. We've got Iron Man from the Marvel uh, Select. We've got black hole creatures. I don't know what those things are. We've got a bunch more of these in because they were not supposed to sell that well. I get the feeling we underordered. We only got three of the uh, Candyman. I have a feeling we underordered because, yeah. Uh, this guy right here, I've actually got one of these <laughs> before they came to local comic book store retail, but it's a good one. The Freddy Krueger from the uh, Final Nightmare, uh, New Nightmare, excuse me. This, we got one in. We got one in. Guys, you all love the thing that I got on my wall. Well, guess what? This is where I got it from. I literally got it from that pack where you also get the uh, original Quarter Vowels um, trade paperback inside. So if you're all like, I love the Quarter Vowel things, hey, this is how you get it. We got Don Vito over here from The Godfather, which I think is freaking hysterical. Uh, Superman, because you can't go wrong with Superman, ever. Yeah, these little guys, oh geez, the serial guys. Serial killers, everybody remember Green Jello? So uh, yeah, uh, these guys over here, no, it's not a pumpkin, it's gritty from the Philadelphia Flyers. I made the mistake too. If you got a, ca a Captain Janeway doll, then consider getting the, uh, the uh, Vincent, uh, duh, Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci, okay, my head is going too fast. Anyway, so I'm just gonna stop talking and just talk about the new pops. <laughs> Venomized Punisher, Venomized Doctor Strange, Venomized Captain Marvel, all awesome stuff. Venomized Miles Morales, Kingpin, new Kingpin out. And we got a bunch of little guys here. You know, when mom says, bring your kid brother or sister to the store, then, you know, you can get this stuff and tell them to shut up. Anyway, these things all exist. Hey guys, don't forget that April 4th, coming up, we've got the artists, the local artists, Sketch for Charity. All of this stuff is gonna go uh, for local charities and whatnot. If you wanna enter, if you're local or you can get here, by all means, swing on by because we'd love to have you. Uh, otherwise, come on in, you actually get to watch this stuff. Hey Carlos, is this stuff still gonna be on Instagram Live? Yes, they will be voting by Instagram, Facebook, in-store, Twitter. Okay, so, locally, uh, like actually in store uh, on Facebook on Twitter and on um, uh, Instagram you can actually watch if you're far away and you could watch everybody doing these sketches and you actually get to vote on who the winners are I'm just saying that's kind of a big deal so you want to check out a whole bunch of local artists who's gonna be the next big one who's gonna be the next Jack Kirby because they could be here on April 4th and you could watch them live. Anyway, all that being said, make sure you guys check out the reviews, whole bunch of good stuff coming up. I think that from now on, uh, Thursday nights, AKA Friday mornings at midnight, that's when I'm gonna be doing all of my uh, uh, Dawn of X reviews, like the live ones, so all you guys can interact with me. That gives you guys plenty of time to read them. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think. Uh, aside from that, Going to start getting a couple of reviews starting tonight uh, after midnight, and I will talk to you guys later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.